Greetings. Welcome to HTLA Radio 1 New York, New York's best talk. Enjoy our automated system. Stand by for our automated podcast delivery system to engage. Today's episode of Coffee and Cigarettes. Wednesday, Grinder will begin momentarily. Please insert coin to listen. I'm George Decay, and he's the T-Rex of Talk Shoe. You're listening to the News Guy Show. Yes, it is. Time again for that show. Once again, folks, it's the News Guy Show with your host, the News Guy, every Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern over the News Guy Show radio network and, of course, uh, here at Spreaker.com. And if you're listening to this over the podcast, then you are more than welcome. Well, anyway, folks, I don't know. Listen, I don't know. I, I went running today on the treadmill at the gym. I went running yesterday also, and it was pretty good. You know, I wasn't doing too hard yesterday, and um, it actually was the first time that I went running in a while, uh, believe it or not. I mean, I've been going to the swimming pool all the time. And, you know, like sometimes like on the weekends, I'll like go to the gym first, I'll go to this like to run. I don't do the weights, and, you know, because the weights, it's like, I don't know, it just seems like a waste of time for me, because it's like... Actually, with the um, with the swimming that I've been doing, I've been developing my, my upper body, which is really weird, and uh, I don't I don't understand how that happens. But uh, but I have only been going running on the treadmill. I should be going running outside on the streets. But you know, I don't want to mess up my knees. You know, because you run on the concrete, and you know it puts too much damage on your knees. And I you know I don't want to do that. So I go running on the treadmill treadmill so it kind of saves that whole idea so i went yesterday everything was good today i went again i pushed it i think a little too hard um and then like you know i'm also i also wear like a loose t-shirt i think i should wear tight t-shirts from now on because i wore this loose t-shirt and every time i wear a a, a loose t-shirt actually this t-shirt wasn't loose before and now it's loose now and and when I'm pumping, you know, when I'm pumping my arms, you know, because I'm going faster, really trying to push it, pushing the pushing it to the max, you know, no pain, no gain, and all of that. And I'm like, you know, sweating and everything, and it's horrible. But then, like the the shirt is like brushing up against my nipples, and this is horrible. And it's like on my left nipple. It's all sore now. It's sore to the touch. It doesn't even, you don't even have to touch it. It's just like, you know, it's like it's burning. It's horrible. It's terrible. I'm in pain. I, I feel sorry for the women because, you know, but I don't know. I mean, maybe if you wear like this, I don't, I don't know. You wear a support bra, you wear one of those running bras. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But I did learn, and this is on my own uh, thing, and I, you put a little Band-Aid over your nipples before you go running, and then it, everything is fine. Well, not a little Band-Aid, you know, depending on the size of your nipples. You know, you put a Band-Aid over your nipples, and everything will be okay. Just be careful when you take the Band-Aid off, especially you men, because, you know, if you have hair on your chest, you know what I mean. It's not going to be pleasant. Let's just put it that way. But anyway, enough about my sad life. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, let's see. Now, this is really very weird, actually bizarre, because you remember yesterday how I was talking on the show about over the weekend, the uh, ABC News, they, were, they had all of these people on. They had um, McChrystal on. They had the the current front runner in Iowa, um, the, the guy from Wisconsin. What's his name again? You know what his name is, Michael Sneed or something like this. I don't know what his name is. Some guy from Wisconsin, the governor there. 
And, of course, uh, the, the pig farmer who wants to cut off everybody's testicles. She wants to turn everybody into Bruce Jenner's. Oh, excuse me, Caitlyn Jenner's. And they're all up there, and they're saying, well, you know, listen, I, I don't think that uh, right now I wouldn't want to put any troops in, but if the time is needed, and, uh, you know, then they go into some variation on that. And uh, today, all the news came out that Obama is now going to be sending uh, several hundred troops to Iraq. Well, only to train the nation's military, of course, which I don't understand because haven't we been training these idiots for like how many years now? For like more than a decade? And uh, what's the deal with all of this? Rude white people Facebook post. Oh. Well, wait a minute. Let me. See. Uh, all right. I just saw this as a, a, a sidebar on uh, the Washington Times. I'll get to this. This looks. I get to this at the end of the show. I just saw this. But anyway, this is the problem with the uh, looking at things on the internet. You look at the sidebar. Your eyes go from left to right. You get distracted by the sidebar. And the Daily Mirror is the worst one because they always have, you know, these hot babes in bikinis on the left, on the right side. They always do that. Anyway. So, President Obama, according to the Washington Times and many other sources, he's ordering up to 450 more U.S. troops to Iraq to help with the training of Iraqi security forces in the fight against ISIS. And uh, these uh, additional troops will be used to set up a training base in Anbar province where Islamic State fighters captured the key city of Ramadi three weeks ago. Now, I don't know if this is the base that um, they were talking about on ABC News over the weekend uh, where uh, they're building this whole thing. I think they were talking about it being a city. Now, here they're talking about it being a base. So it's like troops and a base. So and if they're building a base, and why, you know, you're going to be putting a lot more troops in. I mean, let's not, you know, you know, this is the whole thing. And I, you, I, I called it here first. I read between the lines of all the crap that they were putting out there. And I knew that this was coming. I didn't think it was going to happen so quickly, like the day later. But, uh, yeah, it's always, you know, it's just advisors. Yeah. Now, you see, here's the thing. What I caught in this Washington Times article um, they're saying that President Obama removed all the troops out of uh, Iraq uh, in 2011. So in 2011, no more troops. But then, two paragraphs down, okay, the first they have the quote from the White House. This effort will complement the efforts of U.S. and coalition trainers at the four previously established training sites. And uh, then they say there are currently more than 3,000 U.S. troops in Iraq with 2,250 of them devoted to supporting Iraqi security forces, 800 protecting U.S. Uh, personnel and facilities, blah, blah, blah. So how can they say, yeah, this is the whole thing. They always say, oh, Obama pulled all the troops out of Iraq. He never pulled all the troops out of Iraq. They, they were always there, even after they left. And they had this uh, 3,000 in there, and they got 3,000 there now. So this is the whole thing. It's just lies and deception, you know. Now, um, going along in that uh, uh, mode, let me see what the New York Post here had to say here. Now, the now the U.S. All right, the New York Post says that there are thirty one hundred um, trainers and advisors, U.S. trainers and advisors in Iraq. So, you know, so for one, Washington Post says three thousand. New York Times says three thousand one hundred. Eh, you know, I guess, give or take 100, right? But then the other thing is, of course, that Obama said on Monday that the United States did not have yet a complete strategy for training Iraqi security forces. And uh, the audio on that is pretty funny. I didn't get a chance to isolate the clip because I was isolating other clips, but <coughs> excuse me, it was just like, it was almost like a kid who... Um, wasn't uh, it w didn't prepare uh, or didn't uh, have his homework assignment turned in, and he's trying to explain to the teacher. 
uh, you know, the dog ate the homework or whatever it was. You know, it was kind of like that. It was pretty funny. So, you know. So anyway. And then here it is, the new U.S. training base. <coughs> all right, so it's going to be a, a training base, troops, all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, you're going to have all of these people in there. And then, of course, you've got a whole uh, new president coming in in a year and a half from now. So, I don't know who's going to benefit from this, but uh, this is what's going to be going on. And uh, so it goes. Now, while we're talking about Iraq and Syria and all of this stuff, I did happen to listen to uh, Michael Savage uh, today, his podcast from yesterday, his show from yesterday, and on the podcast. And I was really stunned to hear some stuff that he said on his show. Now, where is it here? Okay, here we go. Now, here's the first clip. I couldn't believe it myself, but uh, here it goes. Here's he's talking about ISIS, and he, what he has to say will shock you. It shocked me. Especially coming out of his mouth, because he, you know, this is the whole thing. I was the first one in the entire world media to point out two weeks ago when ISIS took Ramadi, and they did a victory parade of a half mile long of their Toyota trucks with machine guns. And Obama, the smoker, did not launch one airplane at them, not one fighter jet, not one rocket. So I said, this proves to me one thing. We're not only not fighting them, they are us. They're our factotum army. We supp supplied them with arms that they, quote, captured from the Iraqis. We supplied them with arms. We supplied them with training. John McCain suddenly shut up his crazed mouth about bringing down Assad. You understand the whole picture? I also told you what's going on. So, well, first off, he's not the first one out there. A lot of people, when ISIS first came out on the scene two years ago, I was telling you that this was created by uh, the neocons. You know, I was, the way, you know, all of a sudden, uh, ISIS is on the march, and uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with the heart. The old guy with the heart, he comes out of nowhere again and writes this big op-ed piece, and all the neocons are, are blasting their names all over the place, you know. So I, you know, I don't know. He's he's all of a sudden he's watching something on television, and he's got an epiphany, but that epiphany actually is um, not really so much of an epiphany because we all know that Savage does rip off uh, radio hosts. Uh, you know, we don't need to go into the details. But he does steal um, very liberally, uh, ironically, very liberally from uh, other radio hosts. And uh, it seems that he seems to be borrowing from Alex Jones's book uh, this time around. Um, the two have gotten pretty uh, cozy with each other over the last couple of years. Um, they have appeared on each other's shows um, from time to time, especially whenever uh, Savage has to sell a book. He goes on Alex Jones's show for an hour, and uh, the, 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 that uh, that uh, British twink that uh, is supposed to be the reporter on Alex Jones's show uh, comes on to a Savage's show from time to time. So you know there is some sort of cross promotion, and it's all tied in with the drudge. So you know when these people are talking like you know that they're, they're trying to sound like antiwar.com and all of this, uh, don't believe the hype. Well, there he was, yes, all the way from Iceland. That was indeed the news guy. That's right. Musings of a New Yorker stuck in Iceland with a flat tire. There he was, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, there he goes. And it is 3 p.m. Eastern in the big city of New York, where it is 89 degrees right now. Central Park, sun's a beaming. It's a beautiful Thursday, yes, the Thursday double-double, June 11th, 2015. We're here, we're rocking it, and uh, there you go. <clears throat> and here's hoping Spreaker has fixed their issues. Man, yesterday was a, a pooch screw, wasn't it? Yes, well, it's all right. We've got a, another pooch screw for you today. <laughs> yes, we do. 
Today on the big show, we've got that New York manhunt that's now focusing, of course, on the prison area itself, as that Philly tip was discredited. Yes. Also, we got big gay marriage adoption news, too, as a Michigan law allows adoption agencies now to say no to gays. That's right. You're just going to have to go back to that penis and vagina. Sorry. <laughs> Also in Virginia today, uh, we've got a 17-year-old who pleads guilty to assisting ISIL. And do you have a college certificate from the University of North Carolina? Well, hate to break the news, but you could lose your job and, and your lifestyle and, and everything else. Yes, and the University of North Carolina today has been placed on probation by the accreditation agency. Now, if they don't smarten the hell up, they lose it. That means your paper's no good. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. We'll also tell you about the Walmart brawl in the shampoo aisle and just how much it upset the local mayor. And hey, we got food news. Yes, we do. It's your cooking show. You may want to change your diet, too. Yes, the zombies know. A tribe has become immune to brain disease, you guessed it, by eating brains. <laughs> So there you go. Cooking with Gilbert, eating brains, coming right at you. There's so much more today. So, hey, come on in and grab a cup. Have a seat and light one up, gang. It's coffee time. That theme we all know and love, isn't it? That's right. Coffee and cigarettes, the Kennedy song right there. Well, welcome to the big show today, your Thursday double-double. Yes, news, information, and all that good stuff. And man, we, we got a hell of a good show for you today. But first, I've got to mention that the fine one and only Jenny McCartney, former social media goddess, is in the booth today, pushing the buttons, making us go on that pre 2442 digital mixer. And hey, if you're into audio, you already know. Get over to presonus.com. Also today, the show is proudly brought to you by the fine folks. Tim Hortons, New York City. Yes, fine coffee and baked goods right there. Now with eight locations in the big city to serve those coffee and baked goods urgings. And they do it right because it's always fresh. Tim Hortons, you betcha. Well, moving along today, I do also have to mention, seeing as how we just paid the power bill, that we are, of course... Powered by ProCast. Yes, and again, I don't know what the hell that is, but uh, we play that and good things happen or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, welcome, gang, to the show. Hope you're enjoying your coffee and smokes today. I know I am. Yes, siree. Mm, by the way... Hmm... There's a good one, yeah. <clears throat> yes, there it is. Well, I do have to. It is time, yes, once again to in, 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 welcome our, our three lovely guest co-hosts today on the big show. Coming to us first, of course, from Mill Bay Studios in beautiful Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada, is the one, the only, Louis Lawless. Sir, are you there today? You being Catholic, you realize that you can have birth control. You realize that? Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Lawless. That's great. Yeah. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? Well, you see, you always do it, so I would say that would be a yes, because, of course, I inform you every single day that you're on about a 20-second delay, and Jenny's got the button, and it's fine. So about, just... about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Okay, fine. Well, moving on, about eight blocks down the street here, coming to us from his beautiful, sprawling, stately apartment mansion. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there he is. The one, the only... Uh, Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried. Hi, I'm Gilbert oh. Gottfried. Of course, I had to say that up front because a lot of you are probably looking at this going, Oh, look, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. How'd they get her to do it? You, you're going Caitlin on me, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. You just want that next Vanity Fair, don't yes. you? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes. Well, I, I'm I'm going to – oh, God, I couldn't see you in a dress at all. I, really, <laughs> I don't think they – well, no, you could go to the little girl section. And, <laughs> The little girl section. What the fuck? Well, you know, it's, it's what I do. I'm ready. You're ready. Good. We'll, we'll roll this bitch. Yeah. Uh, also joining us from his lovely home in Malibu, California, and because I can't get anybody else, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there he is. The trademark a laugh right there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Gilbert, you, you don't have to one-up him. He was doing fine. Is <laughs> <laughs> the one and the only George Takei. Thank you for being here, George. Uh, tell the folks a little about yourself, please. I'm George Takei, and uh, when I'm walking down the street, people shout out, Hey, Sulu. So I'm no more as Sulu than as George Takei. Which is what I really am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't ever get that slant eye thing. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Your money no good here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you get out. You are a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, uh, whatever. Uh, one day you'll thank me for buying and owning a corner store. There you go. <laughs> And yes, I'm not an idiot. I know that's Chinese. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, I, I had to go with it. I'm working here. You know, I'm just doing what I can. Yes. Uh, well, moving along today, of course, we've got a wonderful show planned for everybody. We've got cakes, cookies, and other assorted bits. <laughs> <We've> got, uh... <laughs> of course, it's, it's not going to be a good show for George. In fact, uh, we actually had to pay him this time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, because we've got a lot of news today, yes. and, uh, well, there's a lot of news that's not good for gay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, if, you, uh, if you're if you sucking it or taking it in the hoo-hoo, <clears throat> the, the back door, yes. the, the barn door, the asshole. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's not a good day for gay, no. But before we get to that uh, happy, happy gay news, um, <laughs> we, we do have to uh, move to the uh, top story this hour. Yes, this just in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the manhunt focusing now on the prison area as a Philadelphia tip has been discredited. Yes, the New York killers are at it again. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes. Roads and schools were closed and a manhunt intensified today near New York State Prison as authorities investigated a new lead into the whereabouts of the two escaped killers. Richard Matt, 48, and David Sweat, 34, remained on the run for more than five days now after their audacious flight from a Clinton Correctional Facility. New York State Police closed several miles of Route 374 East in the village of Denmora, where the prison is located, to West Plattsburgh to investigate a lead involving the fugitives. Meanwhile, Philadelphia told us uh, that two men had picked up by a taxi driver and been driven to a train station before dawn on Thursday were not Matt and Sweat. The scattered sightings and thin information was best described by New York State Police Superintendent Joe Diamaco. I have no information on where they are or what they're doing, to be honest with you, Demaco said today. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we just don't know. <laughs> what the hell do you want from us? Why are you bothering us with this? We've got stuff to do. <laughs> well, a few miles east of the prison, authorities warned residents to expect an increased police presence as they combed the area for clues. The Saranac Central School District closed schools today in order to assist law enforcement personnel with their search efforts and so the teachers wouldn't have to deal with the little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've closed a number of roads. Officials say they hope to reopen schools on Friday, but don't hold your breath. The teachers are having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the police did not announce details of a new lead. ABC News, citing an official briefed on, uh, in on the search, said bloodhounds picked up a strong scent suggesting the escapees could be in the area. 
Uh, other sources indicate that they believe it was the Sonic Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> And CNN Today says officers have come across a site in the woods where the men may have slept. Food wrappers and other evidence was also found, CNN said. Wolf Blitzer further went on as saying, the dogs are really good at finding food wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Philadelphia, the police told Associated Press the taxi driver did not call police about his concerns until after handling another fare. Uh, you know, that six bucks is important. <laughs> <laughs> well, police then sought surveillance footage at 30th Street Station or anywhere else that might be helpful. Officer Leone Palmiero said that a review of footage revealed that the men were not Matt and Sweat, but Bob and Doug McKenzie from Canada. <laughs> <clears throat> New York and Vermont all beefed up their security along their borders amid concern that the duo may have intended to lay low in a campground in the Lake Champlain area of Vermont. Vermont Public Safety Commissioner Keith Flynn said state police have begun searching camps along Vermont's shoreline and had, had turned up no sign of the escapees. Don't they know? Don't I mean, yes. they should. What is wrong with me? Every time you have lifetime convicted felons that escape from prison, there's only one place they go, gang. That's right. Walt Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in the 60s, it was, I'm going to Disneyland. Yes. I'm going to Disneyland in the 70s and the 80s. You know, yes. I'm, I'm going to Disneyland. Now it's, no, sorry, it's 2015. They're going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody uh, better alert the Florida state officials, <laughs> yes, immediately and without delay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, in a joint news conference uh, yesterday, uh, Go Governor Peter Shumlin and New York Governor Fatso Cuomo <laughs> <clears throat> uh, said the two states had formally agreed to coordinate in the search effort, including uh, allowing New York troopers across into Vermont. Police said Wednesday that they were investigating more than 500 leads. It's funny, 500 leads and they don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a clue. Dia Diamico confirmed that the female prison employee mentioned widely in the media that had been questioned about the escape. He said it was obvious she had befriended the inmates and may have had some sort of role assisting them. Well, yeah, she admitted to that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, this D Amico guy is good. Yes. <laughs> well, Joyce Mitchell planned to be the getaway driver for the pair, but got cold feet. Several news outlets reported yesterday Mitchell helped the inmates because Matt charmed her. NBC News reported, citing officials close to the investigation. She thought it was love. <laughs> <laughs> Her husband didn't think so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was uh, unavailable for official comment, of course, but he's uh, he's having none of it. <laughs> <laughs> they get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's the thing, you know. That's why you got to keep paying attention to the old hag. <laughs> Well, armed with cutting tools, possibly including torches, Matt and Sweat broke through the walls, crossed a cat whack. There's that cat whack again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing some southern state thing. Ah, welcome to the cat whack. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. No, no, sorry. That's Boston. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to go out and wash the cat and the cat whack. <laughs> And they cut into a metal steam pipe, of course, before crawling to freedom through a manhole more than a block from the 150-year-old prison. Matt was serving 25 years to life for kidnapping, dismembering, and killing his former bot. Well, you know, if you dismember him, I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't be an extra charge there. He's he's dismembered and killed. Yes. I, <laughs> why is, <laughs> I don't get that. But yes, he dismembered and killed his former boss in 97. And of course, Sweat was serving a life sentence without parole for killing a sheriff's deputy. And I guess not dismembering him. <laughs> <clears throat> so they are still at large. The authorities don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> and they still 
have not searched HTLA or Gilbert's house. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> they have not done it. Well, it's it's time. I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna have to get into this. It's it's not something I'm looking forward to. Oh wait, it's party time! <laughs> 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 That's right, you homosexuals. <laughs> oh, today is not a good day, no. <clears throat> yes, Lansing, Michigan today. Faith-based adoption agencies will be allowed to refuse to serve prospective gay parents. <laughs> That's right. Such as same-sex or unmarried gay couples, if doing so would go against their religious beliefs in a package of bills that the Michigan's governor signed, a two-day. Not that I don't think that homosexual parents would be good parents. Don't get me wrong. No, no. <laughs> No, I, I just, uh, I'm, uh, I don't know. I feel like dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Governor Rick Snyder said the legislation can uh, codifies existing state practice for private agencies with contracts to place children and ensures as many organizations as possible are involved in helping kids be adopted. The Republican-controlled state Senate sent the bill Wednesday to Snyder as the U.S. Supreme Court on the verge of ruling later this month on whether same-sex marriages should be legal nationwide. The Senate version included a requirement that faith-based... Ba- faith yes, face-based. Yes. <laughs> yes, you, you come on in, and if we think you've got a nice enough face to be a parent... <laughs> Sorry, that is faith, uh, faith. Yes, Jesus, faith-based adoption. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Agencies provide referrals to those agencies if they refuse to service the prospective parents. So the bill went back to the state house, where it was reviewed. A quick conference ensued, and a vote passing sixty-five to thirty-four. <laughs> That's right. Snyder had been coy about whether he would support the bills. Earlier this year, he said the adoption bills would need further review and that he's in favor of children being adopted by, quote, loving families and loving parents. He didn't specify whether that included same-sex couples, of course, because he's a politician. (laughs) (laughs) Why flip-flop when you can just skate through the middle? Yes. (laughs) Well, Michigan, along with Louisiana and Mississippi, already places restrictions on same-sex couples adopting children. According to the Family Equality Council, a Boston-based nonprofit that says it represents 3 million LGBT parents. Yeah, well, uh, we got 3 million listeners. Yeah, sure. (laughs) HTLA, you've heard of us. You know you have. Well, on Wednesday, Snyder's spokeswoman, Sarah Werfel, said that the governor would carefully review the bills through the lens of what will ensure that we are taking care of most Michigan children and matching them with their forever families. (laughs) That's right. Well, critics of the bill derided the legislation as state-sanctioned discrimination, especially because many of the faith-based agencies receive state money. But supporters say that the new law will help keep all options open for adoptive parents while not forcing the agencies to compromise their principles for fear of legal retaliation or face closure because of a loss of public money. Amen to the Jesus! (laughs) Amen to the Jesus! There you go. In the 2014-2015 budget year, $19.9 million in state and federal monies went towards supporting agencies for adoption and foster care services, according to the State Department of Human Services. Nearly $10 million of that total went to faith-based agencies that would be covered under religious objection bills. If they close their doors, I don't know what we'll do with all the children, says Senator Rick Jones of Grand Ledge, Michigan. He said uh, yesterday after the state Senate vote, this is a real threat. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. 
I did not sleep with him. Who, the senator? We, why would you bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yes, you did. <laughs> So, see, I've often wondered how George pulls that off. He he goes around and bangs all the senators he can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then blackmails them with the videotape. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what it is. I did not sleep with him. Then that's the quote. Right. Yeah. <laughs> It is, it's all coming and clear to me now. Use power. That's why power is corrupt, and it is. We see it every day. We see it in every job. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah? Do you uh, bang men for money, Louie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are mm-hmm. a douchebag. At least I don't bang men for money. Come on. <laughs> Well, okay, not money. In this case, it's, you know, political favor. Yes. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yes, the real threat. Uh, GOP Senator Tom Casperson of Escanaba, Michigan, uh, quoted scripture saying, Jesus told a woman accused of adultery, go and sin no more. He called it out. He just didn't accept it and say, live however you want. The creator is pretty clear on certain things. Uh, Okay, doofy. Um, uh, Doofy senator. Yes. Doofy... Yes, Tom Casperson will call Doofy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, separation, say it with me, of church and state. Shut <laughs> <laughs> and I know, I, I realize that, you know, this is, you know, oddly working out in my favor. Yes. I know. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, we'll, we'll take whatever we can get these days, you know. Well, opponents said that the bills signed legalized discrimination against the lesbian and gay and bisexual and transgender communities as well as unmarried couples. Oh, well, you know, we've got that Religious Freedom Act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and look at that. They mention that here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, these RFRA, Religious Freedom Restoration Act adoption bills, are the most egregious example of religious conservatism run amok in our government, says former bedmate to George Takei, Senator Coleman Young. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, children are in desperate need of stable and loving homes. Well, you know, you can't have a stable and loving home when you're too busy explaining to little Bobby why Joey over there has got two dads or two moms. (laughs) It's uh, it's not too damn stable because then the kid's going to be like, well, wait a minute, this is the age of equality. I should have two dads and two moms too. Mom! (laughs) Right? And then then it's like the kid actually expects you to take them to Walmart to pick up two moms or two dads. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. And the next thing you know, they're making you get divorced and, and you know, dad's going with Bob and, and mom's going with Sue just to shut the kid up. <laughs> <laughs> they get f-ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. <sighs> to quote Tina Turner, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's running amok in our government, and, well, today we're slashing those opportunities because of archaic, close-minded thinking. Other Democrats said the timing of the Senate action is very clear. Similar laws are being passed to push back against the eventual legalization of same-sex marriage, says, well, another bed made of Takei. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Curtis Hertel, Jr., a Democrat from East Lansing, Michigan. Oh, yeah, that's where that fat Michael Moore's from, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, he says, you're once again on the wrong side of history. Well, sir, I would submit to you, at least I wasn't on the wrong side of George Takei's bed. There you go. (laughs) You are a douchebag. Yeah, I know. Same thing. Yeah. Well, the Democrats had tried to get eight amendments passed that would have, among other things, required faith-based agencies to provide their policies in writing to potential clients on their websites and in their facilities, as well as to comply with state and federal civil rights laws. 
How is this a black thing? <laughs> uh, uh, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. you know what? Here it is, people. If you haven't heard yet, for the last time, you don't have to sit on the back of the bus anymore. (laughs) God, what's the big bloody deal? (laughs) Prohibited adoption agencies that receive more than $500,000 in state money from being able to use the religious objection argument. Yes, extortion. It's your friend. Yes. Yes. And allowed for second parent adoptions for unmarried couples. All of those amendments failed. Only one Republican GOP Senator, Tory Rocca of Sterling Heights, Michigan, voted against the bills. Wow, that means everybody else has been sleeping with George. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Snyder has said that he would veto a Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which caused furor recently in Arkansas and Indiana without an expansion of Michigan's Elliot Larson Civil Rights Act to include the LGBT community. But he hasn't made the same promise on adoption bills. The Religious Freedom Bill would provide a legal defense for a business to subject to state action for refusing services to individuals based on the owner's religious beliefs. Whatever happened to no shirt, no shoes, no service? (laughs) I don't care if you're having sex with 16 different beings from all over the planet and beyond. (laughs) You know, it it doesn't matter to me, but where's your goddamn shirt? Yes. (laughs) You know, eh, well, there you go. So, so, so that's the big uh, news for the gay and lesbian uh, couples out there today. No, no kid for you. No, <laughs> no kid for you, of course. And uh, well, you know that's only going to spread too, just like all those other stupid uh, acts and <laughs> regulations and all that good stuff. But hey, we're going to tell you about that and so much more when we come back, because of course, next show. Uh, yeah, the next show coming up is. <laughs> The next story yes. co- coming up. <laughs> God, what a freaking retard. <laughs> the next story coming up, of course, today is uh, a Christian couple that's deciding to get divorced because gays can marry, if that makes any sense. I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I, I don't know what that's all about, but hey, we'll find out when we get back, back into... You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions? Abundant with rich, fertile soil. What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters. What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches, and always served fresh within 20 minutes, just the way you like it? Now what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons, always fresh, always great tasting coffee. Man, I've been to a lot of places over these past 50 years. Seen the whole true north strong and free. Cause I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Cooksville, Stowville, Bainesville, Bowmanville, Bonneville, Unionville, Oakville, Dunville, Brockville, Boucherville, Melville, Drummondville, Kentville, Grenville, Morinville, Maryville, Parksville, Stephenville, Sackville, Spring Hill, Westville, Walkerville, hanging on a windowsill. Hey! He said, wow, that's a lot of places. I said, hang on, there's more. I've been to Moncton, Picton, Shannon, Vernon, Stellarton, Hamilton, Nipigon, Nobleton, Yorkton, Brighton, Bolton, Beaverton, Brandon, Edmonton, Walkerton, Wyerton, Granby, Miramichi, Charlottetown, Burnaby, Yellow Knight, White Horse, Cornerbrook, none of it. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I cross the prairies, bear, man. I breathe the mountain air. I've traveled, I've done my share, man. I've been everywhere, man. Chippewa, 
Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm, 2011, 12, and 13. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got them There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Oh, yes. Both the Nazis on Hogan's Heroes were Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you, Joe Jones. Hey, you, Cary Grant. <laughs> As a canter. <laughs> hey, you, Joe Jones. Hey, you, Michel Goy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's uh, that. That's just something all kinds of special. I wasn't expecting that reaction. No, you know, when you ask Gilbert about things like his medical history, you know, you... <laughs> Yeah, you, you kind of expect, I don't know, medical history. Yes. You know, is it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What the hell? What the hell? I don't love know. to do that kind of stuff. You always did. Mm-hmm. And put your name up there and dress in different stuff. So fantastic. I, if I can be of any help, let me know. So what's the email address? Uh, yes, yes, please. You can help me uh, first by undoing my bra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is, I f- that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! About, about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Yeah, we're gonna move on. Absolutely. Welcome back to the big show. Of course, HTLA Radio One, New York's best talk. Your coffee and cigarettes for this afternoon's Thursday double. Yes, your June 11, 2015. That's where we're at. 90 degrees. Central Park under sunny skies right now. If you're not there, get out there. If you're listening to us, get the hell off of here and go to the park. <laughs> 
Yes, yes. Take us with you in your iPhone, you losers. Yes. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we, we got to tell you how to do everything? What the hell's going yeah. on? Right? Uh, yes, and speaking of, hey, the listeners. Yeah, it's not. Did, did that sound like losers? I, thought, I, I said. <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I meant listeners. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think what it is, though, uh, Gilbert, yes. is there's a, a some sort of problem with the the internet packet stream. You know, I, I you know things like I say listeners, it sounds like losers. <laughs> you know, um, they get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Oh, I know. And next thing you know, they'll be out here with pitchforks and torches and. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it'll be a, a bad scene. Of course, we'll just toss out Gilbert to, yes. <laughs> to stave off the crowds while we make our escape. <clears throat> you know, I'm the most talented guy in this room. Well, we'd still chuck you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we move on now, it is, of course, time for the uh, HTLA traffic report. Yes. Yes, we got to get to the traffic report with our token black man, uh, Brock Favors. <laughs> <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's up in HTLA Chopper 1 right now. Brock, take it away. Hello, everybody out there. This is Brock Favors with Traffic on the Ones. Chad Armstrong is out sick today. So I am filling in for my usual land reports, and uh, I'm up here at the chopper. But I gotta tell you guys, I am loving the view. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh! No, 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 no. Oh! Woo! All right. <laughs> well, we are um uh we are over the ten, and it's massively clogged down there like a pint of maple syrup on a cool November morning. And we do. Oh! <laughs> okay okay i am uh i am very sorry folks <laughs> it's a little bit of a bumpy ride up here we are now approaching the 405 and uh, where the left lane is blocked by a mattress so somebody is uh gonna be doing a little return to ikea later today you know what I'm oh no please oh god damn oh give me out this mother Daily traffic. Yes. <laughs> right there, HTLA Radio Fun. Yes. And, uh, of course, our condolences, as always, to Brock's family. <laughs> yes. As we move on now to important stories. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, and just before the break, we told you about the Christian couple is deciding to get divorced if gays can marry. Well, call your lawyers. Gays can marry. You know. <laughs> That's right. Couples have been known to hold off on tying the knot until gay marriage is legal. Well, a Christian couple in, well, of course, this sums it up, in Australia... <laughs> says that they will divorce if gay marriage is allowed. Quote, my wife and I just celebrated our 10th anniversary, but later this year we may be getting a divorce, says Nick Jensen. He writes in a piece for the Canberra City News published yesterday. Why? Well, marriage is the union of a man and a woman before a community of the sight of God. Not a human invention. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jensen continues, if Parliament votes to allow same-sex couples to marry, then we no longer wish to be associated with this new definition. Should it come to divorce, Jensen and his wife Sarah won't exactly part ways. They'll still live together, of course, perhaps have more kids. Use the term husband and wife and consider ourselves married by the church before God. They just will not be legally married. And now you see, and, and this, is, this is what I've been talking about all this time. All this time. I've been talking. Yes. I've been saying it. Ain't I been saying it, Miguel? I've been yes. saying it. <laughs> uh, you know, wh- where does our, has our right gone to live traditionally? Yeah? Yes. Like, where, where is that? You know, like, exactly like he's saying, if, if the definition of marriage has now changed, what the hell are we living, honey? <laughs> 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 you know, and, and indeed, I kind of see his point. Yes. You know, it, it, it does really lessen the meaning as it was originally meant. And yes. They frick that all up and then... <laughs> Well, Jensen's piece has drawn plenty of strongly worded criticism, of course, with some readers taking issue with the City News, which news.com.au describes as an independent publication distributed to local businesses for running as its cover story. One commentator applauds the genius move to run the article, writing on Facebook, quote, it's going to do nothing but help the marriage equality cause... Now the country has international pressures not to be so stupid. Traditionalism is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> if it please the court. Yes. <laughs> if it, I'm, I'm just going to uh, just, just kind of remind, oh, I don't know, the planet. <laughs> Uh, traditionalism controls everything. Yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It does. It does. Yes, the Warren Buffetts, the surely you Aussies are familiar with David Black. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, well, you see, all those, those men in power, those, those that you conspiracy fools out there call Illuminati... <laughs> I hate to break it to you all, but they are traditionalists. And yes. uh, <laughs> furthermore, they're going to let you have your little play in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you laugh now, George, but trust me, my friend. Yes. 1984 is not just a movie, and it's coming to a gay bar near you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it's going to help that equality cause. Now the country has international pressure not to be so stupid. Well, the editor of the City News says, quote, the article does not reflect the opinion of the paper. He defends his uh, decision to publish it. I think this couple has an interesting angle and that it was newsworthy, he tells news.com.au. Jensen himself, who says he's received plenty of, quote, love mail, and George gets that all the time. Yes, <laughs> Of course, defends his stance to the Sydney Morning Herald now, noting that same-sex marriage would have serious consequences for children who grow up without a mother or father. Expanding the definition of marriage could also pave the path for polygamy, he says. And that's another thing that all these people that are going out for gay rights, yes. black rights, yes. and, uh, <laughs> you know... They go out and they try and change all these laws. Yes. And they try and make shit the way they want shit. But then after they've done that and they've made change and they're sitting around drinking their Martin Luther Kings. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, of course, the inevitable happens yes. where uh, those new laws that they just helped bring in allow for some other even sicker shit to take place. <laughs> uh, that's... <laughs> Yeah, so let's let's promote polygamy. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Actually, what the hell am I saying? That's a good deal. Yeah! Right on! Polygamy! 50 pieces of ass for every man! Yes! <laughs> God, 50? Christ, I'd, I'd die. Yes. I mean, what the hell do you do? <laughs> I can't handle one. I just... <laughs> 
<laughs> you being Catholic, you realize that you can't have birth control. You realize that? Uh, thanks, Louie, and I'm not Catholic. Uh, <laughs> well, moving on today, we've got, uh, well, uh, kind of a story of a different feather, and no, it's not the Obama news yet. Actually, funny thing, the Obama news, you, you know, when we have it, it's usually, you know, number one or number two story in the day. Yes. Yeah, today it's the absolute freaking last. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a gooder, too, so don't forget to miss that one. <laughs> well, in Washington today, a Virginia teenager has pled guilty today in a federal court to charges that he supported the Islamic State's recruitment campaign in the USA, assisting the travel of an 18-year-old associate to join the terror group's ranks abroad. Among the youngest Americans to face such terror-related charges... <laughs> Ali Shukri Amin. <laughs> See, this is all bullshit propaganda news stories yes. because I know for a fact there ain't an American named Ali Shukri Amin. <laughs> uh -uh. No, all except your George Takeys and all except your, well, hell, Gilbert Gottfrieds. Louis Lawless, yes. you know, uh, God, you know, the, the one, the only topless, beautiful Jenny McCartney. <laughs> Not to be confused with fellow American Jenny McCarthy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, though, those are American names. Uh, Ali Shukri Amin is a sand spider. There we go. <laughs> well, anyway, American Ali Amin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 17 also used his Twitter account to provide instruction on how to mask financial contributions to ISIL by using a virtual currency called Bitcoin, according to court documents. See, I knew there was a freaking use for that crap somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, Assistant Attorney General John Carlin, who oversees the Justice Department's National Security Division, said that the case underscores ISIL's continuing social media effort to draw U.S. sympathizers to its cause. And again, and I, I submit again that for the court that these aren't U.S. sympathizers. These are sand spider plants. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Really? Is, is that? Yeah? You think so, huh? No, no. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. <laughs> well, <clears throat> sand spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, the one, the only uh, HTLA number one fan, Devlon Crawford, is in the uh, Spreaker.com chat room, of course, as, long, uh, as well as our topless intern. Yes. And, <laughs> of course, the one, the only Apocalypse, and a, a host of other fine, fine... Listeners, <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, uh, not losers, yes. right? No, see, <laughs> of course, uh, Sharon Chesley there, is it? right? <laughs> Listeners, <laughs> right? Well, they're all, you know, they're they're in the chat room there, and and uh, Devlon, of course, is having a great laugh at Sand Spider, so you know. I'll do a I'll do a clip complete with music for you for that one. <laughs> yes. No, I'm serious. Uh, you look for that on tomorrow's show. <laughs> yeah. we'll, uh, we'll get that together. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Attorney General John Carlin, who oversees the Justice Department's National Security Division, says that the case underscores ISIL's continuing social media effort to draw U.S. sympathizers to his cause. This case serves as a wake-up call that ISIL's propaganda and recruitment materials are in your communities being viewed by your youth, Carlin said. <laughs> Fear, 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 fear. <laughs> America is nothing but sand spiders. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut. Always hustling. <laughs> always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. Uh -huh. That's, that's a American. Look uh -huh. how they took the country away from England. Uh, never mind England. This is, the, the, I'm telling you, this is the new movement. It's, it's like the new Pepsi generation. You know, the... <laughs> <laughs> Sand spiders, yes. 
Yes, being viewed by our youth, Carlin said, this challenge requires parental and community awareness and action to confront and deter this threat wherever it surfaces. Well, I hate to break it to you, Carlin, but all of our community and and parents and and we're too busy fighting for the right to be traditional parents right now from the gays to <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to be dealing with your sand spiders yes. and uh, no, sorry you know, take your bitcoin shove it up your ass we're out of here <laughs> We got stuff to do in court documents. I'm in. Yes, the sand spider. <laughs> uh, he acknowledged, of course, helping another Virginia teen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The other teen's name is great, too. Sand spider Riza Neckenjad. <laughs> Riza Neckenjad. Yes. yes. Oh, bingo. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I, I go down to the, the county fair there in Louisville, Kentucky, and I, I hang out with Amin and Riza Neckenjad. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, I go to the Washington World War II Memorial and sit there and mourn the losses of all those who died in all of our wars with Sand Spider Amin and Riza Neckenjad. Yeah. <laughs> right. America Today with your host, Riza Neckenjad. <laughs> uh, do you kind of see how it doesn't fit? Yes. Do you see? Yeah? <laughs> I, I think it doesn't fit. I, you I, are a douchebag. No, I'm an American. There you go. <laughs> Well, in court documents, Amin acknowledged, of course, uh, helping that Virginia teen, Riza Nekinjad, to travel to Syria early this year to join the terror group. Nekinjad has also been charged with terror support. Amin faces a maximum punishment of 15 years in prison. Well, I think we should add on the charge of calling himself an American with a name like that. <laughs> <laughs> And hey, any of you losers, I mean listeners out there, yes. <laughs> any, any of you listeners have your degree from the University of North Carolina? Well, hold on to your butts because it's about to get serious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's right. The University of North Carolina placed on probation today by the Accreditation Agency. The Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges has placed the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill on a year-long probationary period, the hardest sanction ever before uh, revocation of accreditation. It's, I'm serious, They one more frat party, they're done. <laughs> well, that ruling was announced at a commission board meeting today and follows the May 20th, 2015 receipt of allegations filed by the NCAA, according to the New Observer. Uh, the decision was a culmination of recurring meetings during the Accreditation Agency's summer conference. Officials reviewed a report piled re or compiled by the commission staff in addition to the second report generated by UNC that found that UNC violated seven standards, including control on ethics, faculty governance, and academic integrity, as reported by News & Observer. The secondary review was precipitated by the October 22, 2014 release of the Weinstein Report, which revealed extensive academic fraud and detailed the workings of the Paper Classes Scheme, a covert operation under which 3,100 students, nearly half of whom, who were student athletes, took classes without faculty involvement, attendance requirements, or even legitimate coursework obligations. Yeah, not looking too good for them. And, uh, you know, it, it's funny. Everybody, yes. when, when uh, those, those online universities came out and, and people were taking all their degrees and stuff online. Yes. And uh, even my wife, Kate, she, she did uh, one as well. And... Uh, you know, you, you pay your money, yes. you, you, you do your course, and uh, your student loans yes. and, and all the rest, they, they bend you over and rape you in the ass just like any other college. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, then, of course, there was that rash of all the, the Internet uh, colleges losing their accreditation. Yes. And, uh, you know, your your degrees are absolutely worthless on your resume yes. now. 
and uh, that that ruined a lot of people's lives, set a lot of people back some some as much as eight and ten years, you yes. know, for for their careers and whatnot. And uh, yeah, if this happens here, this will be uh, the first time it's happened to any of the uh, you know more traditional universities. And uh, yes. <sighs> What the hell's next? We're all going to be working at McDonald's. I, I don't. <laughs> it's 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 not a good thing, and uh, yeah, and uh, I'm not going to waste any more time on it. Is... <laughs> I'm just kind of taking time out to kind of be to to to, to convey to the loser listener that. Uh, <laughs> You know that I, I, I feel their pain. I, I have remorse for all that work and time and effort and money that could potentially be lost right down the toilet with the sand spiders. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just really I feel for them. Yes. it's it's not a good thing. The music is fantastic. Oh, you got to hear it. Okay. All right. All right. No, Louis, we're talking about people, you know, potentially losing their PhDs and uh, and and still owing the the hundred grand. You know? uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories, anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in other fun news. Yes. <laughs> Yes, the University of Oklahoma is to instate mandatory diversity courses because of all that racism. <laughs> That's right. Just three months removed from the release of that racist fraternity chant video that rocked its campus in March. <laughs> uh, the University of Oklahoma will now require first-year students to learn about Diversita. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Chinese, Japanese, dirty knees, look at these. <laughs> yeah, well, I, hey, don't laugh. I mean, that was the diversity training I received as a child, yes. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't, you know, I'm fine. I don't hate George because he's, you know, Asian. He's freaking gay. That's the <laughs> <clears throat> well, the OU announced uh, today that incoming freshmen, freshmen, of course, will be required to take a five-hour course on diversity topics before they can successfully complete their first year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Have you taken your diversity training? <laughs> Tell him what kind of diverse life he can have, Bill. <laughs> yeah. In January, the Oklahoma Daily reported that the university planned to instate mandatory diversity training now for freshmen and faculty after a number of students petitioned the Student Life Office to ban theme parties. And yes, that is the same Student Life Office uh, where the students tore down the American flag and walked all over it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should have country diversity courses. Yes. <laughs> of course, it kind of goes something like this. It'd be about a, a three-minute course. Yes. All right, you scumbags. Which one of you wants to tear down the American flag? I will shit kick you and fucking... <laughs> and, uh, you know, have four or five drunk rednecks behind you when you do it. Yes. And... <laughs> I don't think we'll be seeing a problem with the American flag being pissed on. I don't. <laughs> you know, and of course, some of the colleges uh, being closer to motorcycle clubs could have bikers attend, right? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that would totally work. I love it. OU later came under national scrutiny, of course, in March after that video surfaced online showing members of the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity singing a racist <laughs> chant... Yes, yes, thank you. The SAE scandal caused many student organizations at OU to question if administrators were doing enough to improve diversity issues. Unheard, a black student organization that was at the forefront of demanding administrative change issued a letter of grievances in the aftermath of the scandal. Wow, really? Uh, yes. <laughs> You, you, you start a black rights movement and you call it unheard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and you do things like issue letters. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, pansies. What happened to the Black Panthers? <laughs> <laughs> the militant group that shoot you down, Whitey. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Now we're unheard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they've done. They've reached a particular point that they feel they're untouchable. Okay, Louie, but these guys are, are, never mind untouchable, these are unheard. <laughs> Yes, and, and of course, they're at the forefront of demanding administrative change by issuing a letter. <laughs> well, the new change at the OU curriculum is part of a larger move by the university to create greater diversity among students. Well, there's enough. Take a look around. <laughs> you know, it, it used to be just the blacks and Hispanics we had to deal with in the United States. Yes. Now it's sand spiders. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, the sand spiders will spin their web of terror at your school. Yes. <laughs> well, a big part of the course will be opening a dialogue, says... <laughs> okay, uh, another sand spider here. Yes. Um, <laughs> Janbar Humate. <laughs> Yes. Oh, this is good. Vice President of the University Community and former Oklahoma State Senator. There you go. <laughs> yes, he says in his interview with the Tulsa World, it will allow an opportunity to meet someone different and perhaps make lifelong friendships. Oh, really? Like what? Supporting ISIS? Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. The government says, no, you can't help terrorists. You can't use the Bitcoin. Yes. You, you can't, don't you know we're mission complete? You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> and now that same government says, oh, you should be meeting diversity and helping and enjoying all the diversity. And <laughs> yes, yes. Those students from all different backgrounds. Grounds that we value diversity and inclusiveness, Shumate told the Tulsa World. Deborah Mills, executive director of the Center for Diversity Education and the University of North Carolina at Asheville, says that she is surprised by the fact that the course in diversity wasn't previously required at OU, especially considering other colleges had already implemented similar courses to help stave off the lawsuits. <laughs> Most every university that I know has some kind of initial program on equity and inclusion, whether it's an in-house hours before class or starts whether it's part of a freshman learning seminar, Miles says. According to Miles, making diversity education mandatory represents more for OU than just the next logical step in the response to the SAE scandal. She believes that the move is also a reaction to a larger national trend of recognizing diversity as something that makes economic sense <laughs> make your donations to OU at bitcoin.com <laughs> <clears throat> well moving along of course uh, we've got uh, a couple of more stories before the big Obama news <laughs> <laughs> yes and we're going to be getting to it right after this next commercial break but hey don't go away anywhere because god damn it these commercials are special yes <laughs> These are special. They're close to my heart. I enjoy them. I, I, I masturbate to them. I, uh, <clears throat> so does George. And, of course, after we come back from the break, we will have George's email. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Walmart brawl. Yes, a Walmart brawl. Bet you never thought you'd see a fist fight in Walmart. <laughs> Yeah, well, a bra in the shampoo aisle, no less. Yes. Yeah, in the shit. You, you know, you go there to get your hair clean, you get your ass clean. What, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently the whole damn thing has got the mayor really upset. We're going to have that story when we come back. Back in two. You've got it locked to New York's best talk. HTLA Radio 1. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. 
Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. Or 10 at night. In Chilliwack, BC. Or St. Peter's, Nova Scotia. It could be Michelle. Or Mark. Or Jen. But whenever, wherever you order that cup of Tim Hortons premium blend coffee, you know that it's always, always, always fresh. From Newfoundland and Labrador to Vancouver Island, Tim Hortons, a coffee all our own. When we, we arrived, arrived at our, our hotel, hotel in New York, York the, the porter was, was so incredibly careful, careless with, with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but best the worst part was, was the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain defined that whole vacation, vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Some said the U.S. has lost its innovative power. We said America is lighting the way as the innovation nation. Singular insights, superior execution. That's the power of global connections. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Voted top global research firm 2011, 12, and 13. I've been so inspired by being in New York because everything from what people are wearing on the street to the way they're interacting with each other to drive through the West Village at night and you see a couple kissing on the street or you see someone fighting outside their apartment or you see so much humanity on a daily basis that even if you're not inspired by your own life that day, you can be inspired by someone else's life. You got that long hair. There's only one place to get more Taylor. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Did you ever see the Charlie's Angels episode with Sammy Davis Jr.? Hey, hey, Joe, Joe, hey, Cary Grant, uh, yeah, yeah. as a canter. Hey, hey, Joe, Joe, hey, Michelle, <laughs> yeah, I'm George uh, Dickey. Uh, hey, I know, bro. George. I know. <laughs> Gilbert, you're, you're just one messed up. I, I don't know what. I uh, wasn't expecting that reaction. No, we never are with him. We did just... <laughs> That, that's the thing, and, and, and that's why we don't pay you, Gilbert, because we never know what the hell we're getting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but, hey. You I've know. been on enough radio shows <laughs> to know that in the middle of an answer, 
the guy is like checking the boards and looking over notes and well, talking to other people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, now yeah, you're yeah, impressed. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, I do all that, you idiot. <laughs> <And> I do. <laughs> Well, well, actually, and even not all that, I don't even do all that. Jenny does. Yes. So. <laughs> Maybe it's that uh, love-hate. Well, it could be. It, it definitely, you know, something. It, yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. It's, uh, always when, always with a female and having a relationship, married or legal, uh-huh. it's always better that they do the leaving. If you do the leaving, <laughs> it takes that lingering thing. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we know. <laughs> he well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Uh, all right, fine. <laughs> Gilbert, 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 Gilbert. Yes. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're you're not just another sand spider to me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Partially because I can pronounce his name. Yeah. <laughs> the music. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got to hear it. Yeah, we just did. <laughs> we just did. <laughs> That's it. And that music was, of course, your comeback to the wonderful coffee and cigarettes today. HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. Still 90 degrees, bang on the button in Central Park right now under sunny skies. It's looking good. Tonight's low is down to 72, so it'll cool off just enough to not make you hate living in Hell's Kitchen. That's... <laughs> What you what you don't want to want to do, yeah. Uh, so yeah, moving on in the show today, we got a couple more stories for you before we are out of here. We're already uh, oh, damn way over time because of Gilbert's laughing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I guess in fairness and equality, I've got to include the gay guy too, Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't catch that, Gilbert. I didn't say George. I said Gilbert. <laughs> That's right. I'd like to welcome back. Uh, well, not welcome, but well, I guess welcome back. They're they're in here. They're there. Yes, the Spreaker dot com live chat room is a bustling today. <laughs> We got everybody in there: topless interns, Devlon Crawford. We got the one, the only Apocalypse. We got we got everything. <laughs> we got everything you need. Without a prescription. Yes. Now, that's what we've got today. That's, <laughs> that's it. And moving on, uh, somebody else is needing a prescription too, I'm thinking. They, they got a little bit of pain today. <laughs> yes, in Indianapolis, a punch is traded between two women in the shampoo aisle of the Beach Grove Walmart. Came as a shock to apparently millions of people. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, of course, millions of people because it was uh, put up on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and as we all know, it is the nation's number one news source. Yes. <laughs> well, for Beach Grove Mayor Dennis Buckley, the incident was just the latest in a series of problems at a shopping center that he feels has gone from a mi- main- minor annoyance to an outright public nuisance. Well... Maybe we should let him go be mayor of Ferguson or Baltimore for a while. (laughs) This isn't anything new, he says. We've been concerned about this for at least two years, and there have been just some quiet talks with Walmart concerning the number of police runs down there and the fact that they're draining our resources every single day. (laughs) Uh, They're rolling back the love. Uh, Well, Buckley said, it's my opinion as a mayor that this just has to stop. (laughs) Power tends to corrupt. Uh Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Uh, He's just a mayor. (laughs) (laughs) Who cares? It's it's like, Jesus Christ, get over yourself and, and, I don't know, go... Write tickets or something. Yes. What do you do? What do you <laughs> What do you do as a mayor? Oh wait, I know. You're a mayor. Get get a Facebook page and get some followers before anybody listens to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Walmart officials, of course, say they're just as upset as Buckley. They too want to figure out a way to take all of our money the easiest and nicest way possible. <laughs> 
and of course to erase any bad reputation the store may garner because of the actions of shoppers to stem future troubles. They say they're ready to work with the city to make it happen. Really? I'd be sitting in the uh, Walmart boardroom because, well, you guys know me. Yes. I'd be sitting there going, hey, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll move. You, you know that section over by the, the, the toys and bikes? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's just move the bikes out of the way. They, they don't really sell anyway. We, we just sell them online. <laughs> just, right? <laughs> Well, well, no, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Yes. I've, I've got a plan. You corporate pricks got to listen because I'll make you a lot of money. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, what we do is we clear out that floor space down there. Yes. We get those bikes out of there because, yeah, I, I just said why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the bikes out of there. And what we'll do is we'll shift everything over in the toy department so that, right, that that'll clear up all the floor space right beside home entertainment, right? Yes. And then what we do is we take that floor space and what do we do? We bring in boxing rings to every Walmart location. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. Hear me, hear me out, yes. Gilbert. We bring in boxing rings, okay? And what we do with yes. those is, is, is we have... Uh, the Walmart uh, fight off, I guess we'll call yes. it, and uh, all those low rent white trash bitches out there that want to <laughs> that, that want to duke it out, they can get in the ring. Yes, and 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 this will work really good too for the minorities because you know we've got we've got all these violence problems with black and Hispanics, <laughs> right? So, so we'll put them in there. We'll, we'll, we'll set up a schedule. Yes. And, and Walmart will roll back the prices on your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and, then, and then, because we're Walmart and we've got more money than God. Yes. <laughs> then, then what we do is, is we have like a special celebrity tour where we'll get like Don King and, yes. and uh, you know, some, some boxing greats, you know, former... Uh, heavyweight champion there, Muhammad Ali. He can come and and talk like a bee or something, <laughs> and 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 Mayweather and and all those other has beens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get those guys and 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 and, and spend a little more money. Walmart. Yeah. Uh, we'll get the, the 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 babes of the WWF. <laughs> <we'll> get, <laughs> right. See, and what we do is we get them all together and we, we put them on a national Walmart boxing ring tour. And, and, and they'll go around all the different Walmarts uh, kind of on a regular basis because we spare no expense. Yes. And uh, we'll just have bouts of the, the people in the public there just beating the F out of each other for money. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, mark my words, I think you'll find we will make more money on that than we ever did in bikes. There you go. <laughs> That's how we do it. Which which uh, woman are you married to or living with now? The same one? The what the, the mother of the daughter or the was it a boy? No, no, I, I dumped the bitch and I'm banging Jenny now. Yeah. <laughs> of course the bitch being HCLA's CEO. <laughs> I'm so fired. Yes. Uh, it was nice doing your coffee and cigarettes. Uh, I don't know. Go listen to News Guy for Friday. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so Walmart does want to figure out a way to erase any bad reputation. So I say boat fights is the way to go. Yes. You know? Well, the two sides are slated to meet on June 17th to discuss the situation. Now, the question is, how can we partner with the local community and how can we partner with the local police to limit the number of times that they were coming out to the store? We can do that, and we stand ready to partner with them, Walmart spokesman Brian Nick said. See, there's an American name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good old Brian Nick. No sand spider here. There you go. <laughs> Our hope is that we can have a continuing dialogue about moving forward with the program that is good for the community, good for the store, and good for our customers. Well, I believe my little plan just summed it all up nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, the videos uploaded to YouTube on Friday by Brian May, uh, Indianapolis, showed the brawl between two women from start to finish. 24-hour store on South Emerson Avenue near I-465. Uh, that video has garnered 35 million hits. You're telling me there's no money in my boxing idea? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
what begins as verbal shots between two shoppers, one initially in a motorized cart. Oh, yes, she's handicapped. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yes. Quickly escalates into a fist fight and wrestling match in the aisle. Uh, the boy joins Farrakis too. Yes, delivering punches and kicks under the direction of his mother. You kick him, kick him, punch him. <laughs> 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 he even throws a shampoo bottle at a woman his mother is fighting and confronts a group of onlookers who question his actions. Beach Grove police said charges are expected in the coming days, but they did not elaborate. Because they don't quite know how to charge this sucker. Uh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Buckley said he uh, he has not contributed to the rapidly rising view count. I haven't seen it. Uh, I've been told by several people, including my attorney, in great length about the video. And to me, it's disgusting, he said. It holds the city in the bad light, and it holds the people who live here in a bad light. And I think people who are involved in an altercation don't even live here. It's just very disappointing when you think that all the speeches that I put on for my candidacy for mayor didn't get more than 15 hits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, adding to Buckley's frustration, of course, is a shoplifting incident reported to the store Monday that evolved into a fatal crash when authorities say the suspect ran a red light and crashed into two vehicles while fleeing the police. The accident killed one woman and left two of her family members seriously injured. Buckley said he hopes to end some of the trouble stemming from the store by using a new ordinance recently passed by city council related to public and environmental nuisances. Under that ordinance, Walmart would be deemed a public nuisance. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Buckley explained that the store would be notified by police and officers would have the discretion to issue a... a what? A, a ticket to the business? Yes. <laughs> For every time they're called to the store, violators would face a penalty of $2,500 plus court fees with nearly 500 police runs to the store so far this year... We could afford new body armor. <laughs> <laughs> well, since February 2014, Beach Grove police have made 1,278 runs to the store, resulting in 473 arrests. We're going down there three or four times a day for theft and other issues, and we just can't do that anymore, Buckley said. We don't work for Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. It, it does go on at length, but we've got our cooking segment with Gilbert coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're already over time, and I, I, I don't want any of our losers, listeners, to miss this. <laughs> we, we, we don't want to do that, so we, we've got to move right in now to uh, cooking with Gilbert. Yes. <sighs> no, I don't even have any music for it. Uh, <laughs> Well, you know, just hum along to yourselves, you know. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go, gang. Yes, you're cooking slash zombie news. Yes. Uh, there's a recorded case now of a tribe who became immune to brain disease. Yes, you guessed it, by eating brains. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When members of the Four Tribe in Papua New Guinea ate the brains of their extended kin at funerals, it was their way of paying respect. Unfortunately, the risk ritual also helped uh, the Kuru Prion disease, a form of schizofed Jacob disease, CJD, a rare but fatal brain disease that can lead to dementia and works on a molecular level, much like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Well, researchers say they've isolated a, the mutated, mutated gene that actually helps some members of the tribe survive the brain disease that has its height in the 1950s, and it claimed 2% of the population annually. Several individuals right at the epicenter of the epidemic, uh, they have this difference that we have not seen anywhere else in the world, says the study's co-leader. This is a striking example of Darwinian evolution in humans. The epidemic of prion disease is selecting a single genetic change that provided complete protection against an inevitably fatal dementia. The University College London researcher who studied Kuru for decades tells The Guardian 
To test the prion protein, he bred mice with it and found that they were resistant to all forms of CJD and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. There you go. Every day, Gilbert, there's hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, his team is already working on follow-up research to learn more about how the gene works and perhaps even d devise a way to prevent these diseases and other forms of dementia in human beings. So we got that to look forward to, but until they actually come out with the drug, uh, they suggest that the best thing to do is uh, kill a member of your family and eat their brains. <laughs> <laughs> now today finally yes we're finally here yes. <laughs> it's uh <laughs> it's been a long time coming but we've got today's obama news <laughs> uh, yeah. sex is only the tip of the iceberg no no louis uh obama not clinton news <laughs> <laughs> time move on move on i know you've been waiting for it <laughs> well it is the obama news and here it is hold on to your butts yeah. <laughs> no it's not president obama it is the first lady today at bottoming the news stories today we <laughs> Another first lady first editing a magazine. Yes, you heard me right. First lady Michelle Obama will be a guest editor for Moore Magazine's July-August issue. Quote, focusing on the initiative she has led during her time in the White House. Ah, uh, what? You mean that failed food thing? <laughs> <laughs> Really? really? That that thing? Oh, I'm going to get all the children in the schools to eat healthy and yes. and properly and not gait weight like the freaking Goodyear blimp I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, those include, of course, like I just said, Let's Move, her healthy eating and exercise for children program. Also, Reach Higher, college education for young people. Who does she think goes to college? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like she thinks a bunch of seniors go to college yes. well, uh, what, what, what do you mean college for young people that's who's there <laughs> and of course joining forces yes her tireless effing work for the veterans yeah <laughs> You know, you know, uh, it's funny. I talk to many veterans, yes. and they tell me that she has done every bit as much for them as her husband has done for health care. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You figured it out. Nothing. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, and of course, let girls learn education for girls throughout the world. Like she'd know. <laughs> <laughs> well, she says, I'm excited and honored to be a guest editor of More this month and tell you a little bit about the issues I'm working on, as well as the extraordinary Americans I've had the privilege of meeting, as First Lady, Mrs. Obama said in a statement. Moore describes itself as the magazine for women of style and substance. Well, I'm surprised you don't have Caitlyn Jenner on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the First Lady is the ultimate Moore woman, says Leslie Jane Seymour, the magazine's editor-in-chief. She's the perfect combination of passion, intelligence, beauty, and glamour, and her gift for moving people to action is the reason I invited her to be our first ever black guest editor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Jane, uh, Leslie there, I think you made a mistake. Yes. I, I do, I do. Uh, never before, and indeed uh, have I ever seen it in my years, uh, have I ever seen anyone with a gift for moving people to action is that guy with the stick in Ferguson, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and he was black. Yes. You know. 
so it, it fills their mandate. And and I mean, you know, in this age of Caitlyn Jenner yes. and, and all this gender stuff now, uh, you know, the magazine for women in style and substance, it could be a man on there. Why not? You know, it, <laughs> <clears throat> all things being equal, right? Yes. <laughs> No, but they had to pick this bozo. <laughs> Bullshitters, never keep your mouth shut, always hustling, always looking for something to do and, and putting things together. That's, that's a f- American. Look how they took the country away from England. Thank you, uh, English reporter for the BBC, Mr. Louis Lawless. There we go. <clears throat> uh, now, before we go, because I promised it and I didn't get to it after the break yes. because he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have, of course, uh, the the uh, George Takei mailbag today, and I, I think Gilbert does all this extendo laughing thing just to kind of eat up all the George's time. I think, <laughs> you know. Well, to be fair, not that George hasn't sucked up, you know, huge volumes of entire shows with his political activism, but. <laughs> But we do, of course, have to get to our uh, our email of the day for George Takei today. Yes. Uh, before we go, and uh, you know, seeing as I'm already 33 minutes over, who effing cares? Let's just keep rolling. You know. <laughs> right? I mean, we still got all the losers in the chat. I mean, listeners in the chat room. <laughs> right. So you know, I, I figure now it's 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 the best time. So today, our email for George, yes. uh, of course, comes from the fat old bastard Governor Christie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the the man we we know and love from New York. There, yes. Uh, you know, it's funny too because I think he should be a little more concerned with oh, I don't know, the escaped killers in his state. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then of course emailing George, but eh, what do I know? I, I'm I've never been a governor. You know, he he knows things I don't, and he clearly eats things I don't. <laughs> well, anyway, George, uh, today the uh, governor Chris Christie there is uh, he sent in his email today his question for you, wanting to know and well I guess it's a fair question because you you haven't spoken publicly about that in specific I, I know that we uh, uh, you know how often do you have sex with bread and of course it was every morning yes. And, uh, you know, uh, are you on top or is Brad on top? Yes. Or did, did you ever did you ever bang Captain Kirk? Yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know we, I did not sleep with him. Uh, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, this question, it, it's a little more specific. And I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm going to right now take the opportunity to apologize to the uh, the loser. I mean, men and uh, g- gentlemen and ladies and, and <laughs> out there. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to apologize right now for the the graphicness of this, but of course, when George came to us, you know, yes. we uh, explained that we'll do the mailbag thing, and you know, whatever we pick is the uh, the ultimate mail for him. Uh, we would ask him on the air, and he'd have to answer. Yes. So, uh, Christ, hold on for this one. Uh, <laughs> of course, of course, we we do. We do know uh, that uh, he has uh, sex, of course, with Brad every morning. Yes. And we do know uh, some of the positions that they enjoy. Yes. Uh, We don't, however, know what Governor Christie is asking here. And so I guess without further ado, I'll just get right to it. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Governor Christie would like to know, George, uh, if... If you do this, and and if so, how often? Uh, when you're banging Brad Doggy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and of course your your, your balls are slapping underneath. Yes. <laughs> uh, when when you're banging Brad Doggy, uh, do you reach under and play with his balls? <laughs> and if so, how often? Yes. <laughs> Every every morning, right? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Well, I I God, thank God, the music. There it is. 
<laughs> I want to thank all the listeners out there today. iHeart, iTunes, Show Tunes, <laughs> uh, Spreaker, just all of them. Just yes. yeah, <laughs> all you listeners out there, all over the goddamn globe, wherever you're listening to us from. Thanks for listening today. And uh, got to thank my one and only co-host here, uh, Louis. Thank you for being here today. Uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories, anyway. Okay, good. Well, it's it's always great to have you, sir. Thank you, Gilbert, again for. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> And, of course, the one, the only, uh, play with my balls, uh, George. <laughs> George, play with my balls to K. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Well, probably not as much as playing with Brad's balls. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a treat to be here talking with you. Well, not as not as fun as playing with Brad's balls. Yeah. <laughs> But thank you guys all the same. Yes. Always a, a treasure and a joy. It's about, about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you to all listeners. And hey, stay tuned. We will have that 90 minute tomorrow, Friday, Frappuccino, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here. Slap Dam. Don't touch the dial. HTLA Radio Fun, New York's best talk. Have yourself a great Thursday. We'll catch you soon.